Hello everybody, Janie Goddard here, President of the Complementary Medical Association. I just wanted to uh, warmly welcome you to this session. It's going to be very, very special. I'm joined today by a beautiful lady called Sandra Rollis. Sandra is one of the most special people that I have found in my travels around the internet. Uh, she offers some truly magical things out into the world. Um, I came across Sandra because I was writing an article just recently for Natural Health magazine one of the magazines and newspapers that I write for and um, the topic of the article was on the nature of forgiveness and as I was doing my research I happened across uh, Sandra's YouTube channel because she has a lot of really beautiful meditations and particularly one that jumped out at me was uh, the uh, was the Ho Ho'oponopono uh, meditation that she has in fact she has several um, but I don't know if you know about Ho'oponopono it's it's a, uh, a wonderful technique that enables us to forgive ourselves and others. And so what I wanted to do was to talk to Sandra about that today and a few other little bits and pieces, some of the burning questions I have for this very, very special, lovely lady. So what I want to do is just to, um, I suppose, throw the, the, uh, the, the floor open to you, Sandra, and just say, could you say a little bit about, uh, you know, the art of forgiveness and what why it's so important at this particular time and uh, just you know take it away the art of forgiveness is something that was very important for me it was a very important part of my journey pivotal moments happened when i really tapped into the power of forgiveness the power of the heart and be because i saw such a tremendous difference in myself i just felt i needed to share it with the world but when you listen to my recordings just remember that I made these recordings for myself and then I decided to share them with the world. So some of these recordings, people, the, the comments that I get, they really feel it. And it's because it's coming straight from my heart. And it was my intention to offer a wide variety of free guided sessions because we have so many people in different places in the world that do not have the opportunity either to travel or to pay money to buy some kind of program. So it's a part of being of service to humanity and of service to myself, because when we heal ourselves, we also heal the people around us and we give them permission to do the same. Yes, of course we do. That's absolutely beautiful. And one of the things that really struck me when I was preparing for our chat today was uh, when I was on your, your website, um, you have an about section, as most people do with their websites. But what I thought was so absolutely beautiful was that you let you didn't actually say anything about yourself at all, but you just let other people speak for you by way of the testimonials and so on that they have put up. And isn't it interesting that you started this work really, you know, the recordings very much for yourself, but because I think it's because you're coming from such a heart-centered place that people are just so attracted to you and your work and the recordings and so on. And the, particularly with the Ho'oponopono in mind, I think it's such an incredibly important technique. Uh, if that's the right word, I don't even know if it, if it is a, te a, a technique or a practice, or, or perhaps you can tell us a little bit about, you know, what the correct terminology is, and also perhaps a little bit, for those people who don't know about it, perhaps a little bit about what it is and what it does, and why we maybe ought to think about doing it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking. Yeah, some people call it a mantra, some people call it a prayer, it is definitely a tool and a very powerful technique to use because it is so simple. It, people might be a little bit like, oh, what is this? It's just four little sentences. But I just invite everybody to just try it out. Don't take our word for it. Just test it out for yourself. And how I approach it is sometimes you can use it uh, to literally tune into somebody else your relationship with somebody else and use that prayer that mantra of forgiveness but what i also say to my clients and to people that reach out to me is it doesn't always necessarily have to be directed to the person you can also work on the field between two people because i think all of us have some kind of memory of somebody that maybe hurt us or that we felt resentment towards and it could be really really a big step and a very hard step to take 
to then say, I'm going to radically forgive this person for what happened. That might be just a little bit stretching it just a little bit too far. So then I would recommend using the Ho'oponopono to clear the field between you and that other person so that at least you are free. You do not have to have these cords of attachment because every time we, help, we hold on to resentment or judgment to other people, just imagine that you're linking yourself to them with an invisible energy cord that is draining, draining your time, your resources, your energy. So it's actually the biggest act of self-love to do the whole ponopono, to clear the field between you and another person. But it's also super powerful to work on yourself because there's a lot of times when we look back on our timeline and the decisions and choices that we made where we're like, oh, I wish I said this. I wish I'd done that. I've, you know, I could have done things so differently. And even there, there's judgment and resentment towards the self. And that is actually holding you back from fully stepping into the now moment and creating a new future. So on all levels, it's such a powerful tool, technique, prayer, mantra, whatever you want to call it. It just works. Yes, absolutely. Well, I would testify to that as well, because I have to say it's worked for me um, many, many a time and, and many other people I know. But at this point, I suspect that viewers may be thinking, so what actually is Ho'oponopono, you know, what, what do we do? What do we say if it's a mantra? What do we say? Would you mm -hmm. be able to explain a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. So it's four sentences and it's, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I thank you. I love you. And it's not necessarily the words themselves, but it's the energy behind it. So I have one free guided session. I have multiple free guided sessions that incorporate the whole ponopono. But one of them uh, is for self-forgiveness, radical self-forgiveness and deep self-love. And in that video, I explain a little bit more about where the technique comes from and how to use the sentences. So it might be good for people to kind of go there and uh, research that for themselves. What we'll do actually is we'll put a link. So everybody, just so that you know, underneath this video, there's a little arrow, a little down arrow. If you click on that, what happens is that the show notes open. So I know a lot of people coming to my channel are very new to YouTube. So that's how you find out what the show notes say. So we're going to put links there to obviously Sandra's, all of her contact details and any of the um, in really interesting things that we're actually talking about in this video. So we'll definitely put a link to that one, Sandra. Uh, that sounds absolutely beautiful. So um, we get, we're living in very strange times at the moment, um, needless to say. Uh, I don't know how things are in America at the moment uh, where you are, um, but uh, in the UK they have very slightly relaxed the uh, social distancing laws, very slightly. How about you and, and where you are? How, how are things there and how's the energy of, of what's happening at the moment? Well, I feel very fortunate to live uh, right next to the forest. So I, I don't live in the city and I live in the state of Arizona, Sedona, Arizona. So I'm not really feeling what maybe other people like in Europe are feeling. I'm not feeling that strict regulations. Here in America, I still feel it's like the land of freedom and we still get to choose. But even in some states in the United States, they're very strict, the rules are very tight. And what I'm seeing is that a lot of people are struggling with this restriction, just the restriction, the rules, and feeling that their freedom is being taken away from them. And that is actually a powerful catalyst for things to come up to the surface so that you can look like, okay, where am I still giving my power away to all these rules and regulations? Because it's, it's, we still have a lot of freedom within all the rules and restrictions that are placed upon us. And it's an amazing tool right now. It's an amazing catalyst to really dive a little bit deeper. If you feel some sadness, some grief, anger, rage, resentment, judgment come up, look at it. Where is it coming from? Where have you systematically, maybe in the course of your life or many lifetimes, given your power away, just obeyed? Uh, be, you know, for me, it was a personal journey of recognizing that I was a tremendous people pleaser and that came from childhood trauma and how my attachment style with my caretakers was. So 
what is coming up now for everybody, everybody's going through it now. It's a, it's a global awakening, a global opportunity to look at those little parts within ourselves. Like where am I still giving my power away? Because that's where it basically comes down to. Where am I giving my power away? Because within all the rules and restrictions, you can still make choices. Absolutely. So are there any uh, recommendations for self-empowerment that you could possibly share? Yes, I think it's important to realize that what I said earlier, that we create these invisible connections, these cords that are draining our energy. It's really depleting our energy, but in some cases it could also be just your time because you're spending time doing things that you really on a basic level don't want to do but you're doing it because you're trying to uh, appease or please other people. Maybe that has been a part of your love language, thinking that is the way I'm going to be loved and appreciated. So it's for all of us just to look at, okay, why am I always tired? Why am I always depleted? Let's look at where you're giving away all of that energy and is it distributed in a proper way? Because often we are giving time resources and money to people that really don't appreciate it and not from a place where they are um where they don't love you or they don't appreciate you on other levels but maybe they they don't value what you think is super valuable so it's very key that we have communication about hey let's say that you and i are in a friendship janie i would ask you know, how can I support you best instead of me just thinking, oh, this is what I would like. This is what I think support is, feels and should be looking like. If I open up that conversation and I ask you, we can uh, become more conservative and more, um, you know, fine tune how we share energy. Yes, I think you're, you're so right. I think we, we project a lot and I think we make some fairly massive assumptions, don't we, about the way, and I love the way you put it, you know, um, the, our love languages and, and the way that, you know, we, we need to experience love, support, friendship and so on. Um, so yes, that, and, and opening up those lines of communication are crucial aren't they um absolutely and you know we need support we need love we need friendships particularly you know even more so at this time because you know all of those do support our resilience and you know if we can support our resilience on uh, on our mental emotional and spiritual side of course that all then overflows to our physical resilience and levels of wellness as also doesn't it so um yeah i i really see what you're saying and i think what you're saying is so incredibly valuable um so so do you have um, any, obviously, you know, we, we need to be optimistic. So once we get out, out, you know, past COVID and, you know, and hopefully it'll be a distant memory um, where we're saying, gosh, that was a strange episode, wasn't it? Let's hope that happens. And, and there is every possibility that it could happen because viruses do mutate and they do just sort of become less transmissible between humans and so on. So what plans do you have? Obviously, I'm, I know that you have been running retreats, beautiful retreats uh, from the sound of it. I've not had the privilege. I've only just found you, so I will be coming on your retreats in the, in the future, I've no doubt. But do you have plans um, for further retreats once we get COVID out of the way, Sandra? How can people yes. engage with you further? I have one planned for September, and I'm, that's still going ahead. Normally, I have a maximum capacity of 20 ladies that come to Shakti retreat. This time, I'm going to cap it off at 10 because I don't know in September what kind of rules and regulations there will be but right now it looks like if we're still in phase one that it will be a maximum capacity of 10 people being allowed to gather though so that's kind of the plan kind of uh, adjusting the retreat a little bit but I'm also starting uh, 10 online workshops that starts on Saturday May 23 and it's going to be all kinds of different uh, topics themes and people can pick and choose they can pick one or they can pick the whole package and that's available on my website because okay. I feel that people you know because we're not able to gather in person we need to uh, continue to build that support team yeah. around us absolutely I completely agree and that's on your website yes so anybody watching they just yes 
website again, everybody, but you know, the details will be below the video. So uh, yes, that's one. Yeah. Yeah. Sandra, um, I cannot thank you enough. I just think that this is so special to be able to spend this time with you. It truly is. And um, in closing, I was just wondering whether you have any words of wisdom for anybody who is stressed out at the moment, um, you know, I suppose particularly with a view to COVID or just generally stressed with life in mm -hmm. general, as we often all are, you know, from one time to another. So what, what are your words of wisdom in parting that people can take away and actually integrate into their own lives? Yes, I would like to say to everybody that you always have a choice and look at where you've been giving your power away. And that could be maybe giving your power away and trusting that there will be some kind of vaccine or some kind of medicine that will come and save the day while we in the now moment can do anything, everything to build our immune system, to strengthen our immune system on a physical, emotional, energetic level so that we take back that power that yes, viruses will come and go, diseases will come and go, but we have the power in the now moment to eat healthy, to take good care of our own health, to boost our immune system, instead of just you know drinking a soda pop in, for breakfast and eating junk food and then wanting some kind of vaccine to come and save us. So each and every one of us on an individual level, just taking back that power, we have choices in every now moment absolutely thank you beautiful absolutely beautiful thoughts thank you for leaving us with those sandra i want to thank you so much for being with us um i feel as though we could just talk forever we found that the other night when we first <laughs> contact but uh, i'm sure there'll be opportunities for us to do further chats uh, because i'm sure everybody will get so much out of them so thank you so much and thank you everybody for tuning in and uh, leave your questions below and don't forget to subscribe and actually hit the little bell icon because we are making lots of these lovely videos and so if you want to be kept informed when we put another one up if you hit the little bell icon a little um, note will come up on your computer every time we re-upload so you'll get a notification take care stay safe lots of love bye <laughs>